It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. <laughs> feedback Friday, still coughing, as you see. Uh, I got to do this real quick in between um, client sessions this week, but this was a better week than expected. Yay, us. Hooray. Uh, Wednesday's video was not a complete shit show in the comments. In fact, it was really good people just added to it and it was cool uh which surprised me but in a good way it's nice to be pleasantly surprised so if you like this kind of content help support this channel become a monthly patron patreon.com slash liana k or buy a one-time liana k session for someone who can use it but can't afford it coffee.com slash liana k um a lot of people in sessions this week brought up the bullying video on Manly Monday and um, that was deep and it brought up a lot of stuff and it the nice thing about <laughs> the YouTube Leanna cares combo is the conversation starters and so people can be like I watched the video on Monday and this happened to me and instead of starting cold right it, it lets people know where to begin which is cool and an unexpected bonus. Um, a lot of people brought up the toxic fandoms one and the most commented on one in one on ones was the thing about um, good but overrated leads to toxic fandoms. And that's very interesting. People are like, there's more to it than that, but I don't quite have it yet. Um, the uh, <laughs> um the comments on that one were uh really interesting i got trolled by nerdette <laughs> tristan nerdette's newsstand <laughs> and getting trolled by nerdette is a bad of badge of pride i see you nerdette i love you that's freaking payback for all the griefing i did you on sandman <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have friends. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, the bullying one in all seriousness, it was, um, <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it was intense. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of, uh, one person said you can be both avoidant and introverted. Yes, that's true. Um, it's true in a lot of cases. I work with people who are both um, avoidant and introverted. Uh, one person said redneck doesn't imply racism any more than being called white. Um, yeah, what's the other term? There's redneck and then there's the ones in the Tennessee mountains. Like you can be redneck and not racist. You can be redneck and racist. Um, but yes, yes. What? Oh my God. The term has lost me. Someone will remind me what it means. Cause, cause yeah. Uh, but let's get to the uh, toxic fandom comments. Um, people brought up, you know, the false moral theory tracking. Um, the idea that it's some sort of, you know, heresy, the religious stuff. Um, which, yeah, whenever something takes on religious overtones, that's an issue. One person said RuPaul's Drag Race fans are toxic, which probably I I am only passing on any of the um, any of the like reality shows. Now I've just dropped right off. Um, uh some stuff on the uh Harry Potter fandom having a ton of drama. Yes. Potter Potter fandom has some absolutely amazing pockets. One of my favorite shoots with uh when I was doing Agents of Cosplay for the Escapist was um going down and doing a Halloween party with a Harry Potter club in Salem, Massachusetts. And 
they were great. I'm still in contact with some of these people, those people to this day, they are amazing people. And then there were people who were not so great. Um, and I mean, obviously we all know the cult of personality that rose up around JK Rowling, even before the troubles. Um, and that might be another thing I'd add that a cult of personality forms around the creator as opposed to it being the IP that stands alone. Um, what do you think about that added to the list? Um, a bunch of people um, backing the the extended universe in Star Wars. Um, and uh, uh, the Clone Wars is something I've heard many argue is the well-written context behind the prequels. The more I learn about Clone Wars Anakin, the more I agree. It is true. A lot of people who are Anakin fans, I found out, because I'm like, how can anybody like that guy in the movies? They didn't come into it in the movies. They came into it in Clone Wars and then saw the movies. So it's like, that makes sense. He's not a complete douche in the Clone Wars. Um, and then um, toxicity festers where expectations aren't met and really erupts when people in the fandom are still learning the mature approach to things. I saw that. I feel like I saw some of it with the Final Fantasy VII remake. The radical shift in gameplay between the original and the remake wasn't what people expected initially. So I recall a lot of angry people when its details were first announced. I know I was one of them, though not in the must-go-to-the-internet to vent sort of way. Rather, that sucks. I was really looking for that. But the high-action gameplay, I guess it isn't for me. I was one of those people. I streamed that game. I didn't take to it. And uh, I'm like, okay, it's not for me. And I moved on. It is possible. So yeah, just not liking something is not toxic. I want to be clear. Toxic to me is not just a word I throw around with anything I don't like. Toxic literally means there is some sort of poison choking off anything good. Um, uh, about fandom and shipping, I'm reminded of the time people were pushing Ellen Parr as a lesbian because she waved at a girl in the Incredibles 2 trailer. Someday I'll get into that whole thing about, you know, gay fans adopting or LGBTQ plus fans adopting certain characters. I'm not going to do that on the second day of Pride. Happy Pride, everybody. Um, toxic fan bases to me become toxic because they see something others don't. And if you don't see it, it's evil. Uh, but what I think make toxic fan bases more and more toxic is their growing numbers. That's... Interesting. This is a much longer comment, comment, but that's interesting. Um, but jumping to the problem with The Last Jedi, in my opinion, is the director was so busy trying to kick out the old and subverting everything, try to toss it away, that it became unfulfilling and introduced power creep. That is the scaling of the, the power scaling of the characters and the knowledge had to spike up so much more to fight the big bad as we see in Rise of Skywalker. That's very interesting. I don't think, based on what I know of the various people involved, I really don't think The Last Jedi set out to be what it was. I think people who come onto Star Wars now, no one, hot take, no one whose favorite movie is The Empire Strikes Back should direct anything Star Wars. Because The Empire Strikes Back is the middle. The way the two towers is the middle. You do not have to write the en entire ending in the middle. So you can do all this interesting character stuff and, you know, that's the... That's the low point of the hero's journey, like the descent into underworld, everything like that. So it's easy to be dark and gritty and do all this character stuff because you don't have to write a beginning and you don't have to write an end. And you need to understand that to do Star Wars because Star Wars, at its core, is space opera with a Kurosawa flair. And it is the problem with Star Wars being a simulacrum at this point, it's a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy to the point that the original is destroyed. So what's the original? That, you know, if you forget that, you end up with, 
The Last Jedi instead of season one of The Mandalorian. Um, moving on. Thank you. Uh, one person, I would love really, really nerdy game dev stuff. I would too. People don't watch it. So I might start doing that on Patreon. I don't know. I'm, I'm toying with doing more because originally the thought was, well, we don't want to have anything really good paywalled because everybody should access it. But there's stuff I want to talk about that I don't feel is appropriate for this forum. So I'm reconsidering. Um, what's BL? I don't understand that comment, commenter. Speaking of actors and shipping the fan service, a lot of BL actors have to do is very uncomfortable. What does that mean? I don't understand. Um, someone, I didn't, I didn't know about the Nightwish drama in one comment, so I'll need that explain because I love Nightwish, but I'm behind. So what happened with Nightwish? Nightwish is a band, by the way. Um, you missed the step of Homestuck to Steven Universe. A lot of loud toxic fandom originated from people that Homestuck was their first fandom. Don't get me started on Homestuck at anime cons. Correct? You are correct. Um, so a lot of the time, this is an interesting comment. <laughs> and they, they are going to be careful, don't want to... So I'm going to be careful I can so I can try not to speak for anyone else's opinions on the toxicity of fandom. Thank you for starting that way, commenter. That was very mature. A lot of the toxicity seems to me to come from negative passions of narcissism, entitlement, obsession, projection, expectation, and mental illness in some cases. A lack of emotional control. No, not emotional repression. The ability to process disappointment or understand that one can't get what one wants all the time. So they pick targets and attack. Or they make stuff up in their heads and demand it to be reality. Corporations that fan the flames are doing it to generate attention for their products. They are doing it to generate attention for their products. Yes, they are. They have been at a few years now or try to hide some sort of shady business practice behind the scenes. The toxicity fuels them to the extent, but like wildfire, it quickly becomes out of control chaos even for them. Shippers have been around for a very long time. I'm talking centuries. You could probably find examples in mythology too. It's harder to ignore these days. Um, Ghost of Tsushima should be an example of video games doing more good in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I understand your caution, commenter, because there's a degree of truth in what you're saying. However, I think that, well... The, you know, narcissistic, entitled, obsessive, projective expectation, mental illness. The narcissism element, um, I mean, not all mental illnesses are created equal, right? Uh, the narcissism element, yes, I do believe there are some narcissists that camp on this stuff because they don't care about right and wrong or any real outcome. They just want attention, right, and power. They are drivers. I think they're the minority, and I'm very careful with this stuff because I know some people who absolutely loved last of us too. <laughs> and I don't mean nerd at, <laughs> but cause she didn't drive any of the toxicity. She's not on Twitter. Um, but see, I have friends who like games. I really don't like see adulting, but, um, there are people who just, Having a mental illness does not invalidate your view. And there are people who are clinging on for whom certain IPs are incredibly important. And I don't want to shit on that. Um, I think that the people who are not narcissists and not you know, sort of the bullying entitled. Entitled, that's a complicated thing. I, I may touch on, I'm going to make a note of that entitlement because that's that's really complex. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of mentally ill people get really attached to media and I think they should be able to do that. And that was one of my concerns about the attacks on people who played Hogwarts Legacy because there are some people who know what J.K. Rowling did but just can't quit Harry Potter. I mean, I love the Roald Dahl books 
even though I know Roald Dahl was a virulent anti-Semite and I wasn't at all surprised. But, you know, I can't, I, I don't own them. If, if a kid was really into them, I wouldn't not buy it for them. I mean, if a kid was really into Harry Potter, I'd, you know, I'd talk to them about it, try to decouple some of the really negative stuff. But overall, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't discourage them from reading it. Um, and, you know, am I separating the artist from the art there? No. Um, do I have really developed distress tolerance? Yes. Not everybody does. And that comes out in different ways. And so, well, yes, I do believe a lot of toxicity is driven by narcissists. I do not believe that the bulk of the people who participate in, in toxicity are narcissists. I mean, I saw the other side on She-Hulk. The pain that was coming off of guys in that was real. Um, and that was a really tricky one to navigate because, I mean, the creators were fanning that some. I don't think they realized entirely what they were doing because, let's face it, if you're a Hollywood writer to an extent, and, you know, those female writing rooms, you are one of the popular girls. Because girls like me ain't in that room, right? Um, and I mean, I see a lot of myself in Jen Gao. I see a lot of the mistakes I made when I was younger. Um, but it is impossible to get anything through Hollywood that is the true, you know, not male nerd experience. <laughs> Gender words are so fraught for me. Happy pride. Um, but yeah, one of my frustrations is you don't get those alternative female perspectives because Hollywood is still too normy. Even nerd media is still too normy. We've got some work to do. So I'm being careful in that, but I do think, you know, point, fair point. Um, another really good point. Something that's been an entry to fandom um, for someone. It was brought up in Harry Potter, but that's true. Star Trek, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Marvel, the MCU. Right? They're entry points to fandom. And that, yes, there's very passionate. Um, one person said... Um, they can coalesce the whole, the common theme. I love common themes. Thank you, commenter. Defending the object of fandom is akin to defending yourself. I'm going to sit on that because that's good. That's really good. I like it. Um, at least part of the Star Trek fandom went overboard with what I would call toxic positivity when Discovery first started. That's interesting. Um, and they... Oh, God, I can't help but dread the shipping that inevitably will happen with the upcoming 40K series. Oh, God, you're right. Oh, that's going to be brutal. The nails, the nails. Okay, uh, okay. Um, yeah, um, people said... Fighting idiots who think, yes, 40K is saying fascism is good. No, that's not toxic fandom. 40K is not saying fascism is good. Anybody who comes here with that can fuck right off. They're not. They don't understand 40K. Um, so, um, uh, one person said, it's always the th thought, the lack of open, honest communication between parties. That is a driver. I agree. Um, similar, uh, on the subject, if you want to work, you have to eat the shit. I have a mean take. As people who aren't willing to eat shit keep getting kicked out of the industry, eventually the audience keeps getting served whatever the shit eaters think is good. And we know what that is by definition. Yep. Um, another person said uh, they like to observe as an outsider fandoms because they love a good train wreck. 
Um, and they talked again about identity being a mesh with IP, which came up. Gatekeeping came up. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll leave on this because I thought this was a pretty profound comment. I'd love to get to more, but out of time. The Star Wars prequels were a good story told poorly. The Star Wars sequels were a bad story told well. I'm going to think about that. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.